Odeo. Yeah. And and I am with Meili and, and Irene. Tunaanza kukula the the cramp faster than is when we come to the those ladies are chala now. <laughs> <laughs> My kids are still here. <laughs> and and I don't think I want to be uh, the guy who loves speed. I like long drives. Drive to Namanga. We have a, a, a club uh, for the car. <laughs> ah, you mentioned it with me but what it shows is that you do a good job in what you do in terms of PR which is a full spectrum of things and some people misconstrue PR I mean spin doctoring and changing things that you So ladies and gentlemen, welcome again. My name is Duncan. I am proud and happy to welcome you to this new segment on my channel. So I have always been driven to hear stories of young men and women who are doing great things. In this world, people talk a lot about people who have already made it. But how about capturing the stories of people from when they started? I know some of these people are going to be great and I want to get the story from the start. Remember. This channel is to educate you, to inform you, to empower you, and to just make you learn. So welcome on board. I want to introduce to you a friend. I want to introduce to you someone who challenges me every single day of my life. Someone who, in this city, uh, we normally say the village boy, the city has accepted the village boy. I welcome you <laughs> to the life and the times and the interesting story of William Decker. First of all, we need to know William Decker. Yeah. Where did that name come from? Um, so actually it's a funny one, or unless somebody sees it as funny or not, yeah. yeah. When I was born, there was a Dutch priest who gave my mom a job uh, as a secretary in some uh, mission hospital. And then to pay back the favor, she decided to name me after the guy. So I was named after some bugger from Netherlands. Uh, so till today, eh? so then I'm some paid back favor, William Decker. But now that name at home in the village, it's too much a Western name, so you'd call it Mzungu. So when my show would come, she couldn't pronounce the name. So I say, ah, we're Mzungu. Eh? So then to date now in the village, they call me Mzungu. Because now William Decker is too much technical and Westernized as opposed to Otieno de Ambo, yeah. etc. Yeah, yeah. But do you love it? Oh, oh, my friend. Oh, my it's friend. Like William Dawson. <laughs> if you, if you. Th <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> but if, if you throw a stone up here, chances that will fall on a William are definitely standard. Mm. Chances that it will fall on a deck are close to zero. <laughs> the other day when we were in yeah. church, yeah. uh, I, 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 I realized that Decker is actually among the litany of saints when you are, when you are, when you are uh, having that uh, recitation. Yes, yes. The, the litany of saints. Yeah. I saw Decker. Yes. And then I actually was surprised. Like, mm. Actually, this is one of Sense. Yeah, you, you people take the village boy casually. That, <laughs> uh, this is a picked up them somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that yeah. was that was very interesting. Yeah, so, but Father William Decker was an excellent chap, yeah, very yeah. generous, and and I know he supported my parents at some point. Their friends who I came to meet in life when they had the name said, William Decker. There is only one guy we know is called William Decker, but turns out he's the same person who schooled them, and and, and so it has always also been a moment now when I'm an adult that probably I also need to just try to live up to some of these values that people say William Decker owned up. Uh, but I think to some degree you have lived up to those values because I think you're one, you're young, one young man who is doing some great things. And uh, today I just want you to, so many people see you moving around, so many people see you doing great things, but they don't know the story behind the yes. life and times mm -hmm. of William Decker. They see the glory, they don't see the story. Yeah? They don't know so much of the things that you have gone through for you to even get to where you are today. So I want to take you back slightly, Decker, mm. for my own sake and for mm. the sake of my friends and all the people the who know you. Yeah. Uh, if you are to think back your childhood during your childhood, what what stands out? Like what just comes out to your mind the first thing you think about your childhood? I look at the time now and it's yeah way much in the evening 6 p.m. So by now we'll be chasing the cows, bringing them back into the boma. We need to start milking. So 
genuine village boy. Uh, it's it's sort of picked up them because then I find it fancy to call myself a village boy. But I was brought up for the larger part. I stayed in Nairobi up to class three, then went to start afresh. And imagine that transition. You you've started off on a high note. Eh? You're in the city. You know a few things here, and then now you go back fully to village life. Yeah, and and so and, and my parents were very solid farmers. Eh? So you'd weed up your grass at very odd times, and you know it goes. It's eating you. You milk the cows. You distribute the milk. Uh, to specific people who buy from you because then it's also supposed to support you when you go to school the next day i um, mean the morning you'll have to wake up for milk it before you go to school as well um, um there are goats my parents used to keep uh, it was something a partnership with an ngo that brought some great goats and 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 they were very hard to feed you have to go look for their feedings yeah. far and wide when it's harvesting time you dread the time at home the harvesting but even when it's farming time weeding planting it was a lot of work but over time, I think it, it, it helped build a few aspects of discipline. You get to learn that nothing comes for free easily. You always have to just work uh, yourself out here. Yeah. Ah, okay. Mm. So when I hear you mention goats, cows, you know those are things that are associated with rich people in the village. Will you, will you like say your child was privileged, even though you stayed in the village? Was it privileged or did you go through challenges? Was it because you can live in the village, but a privileged village, right? Yeah, so yeah. how would you describe it? Well, everybody wants to say how they started from a very humble background and now they've made it in life. I started from a humble yeah. <laughs> background, yeah, yeah. So, so there was nothing, um, um, there, there was nothing affluent about it. Yeah, it was very typical. Yeah, so it's the normal cows. The goats have said it was a partnership with an NGO and they were trying it out. Yeah, so you know the goats when it reaches a specific time, they'll take it them back. You know, <laughs> I've, I've told you I mentioned it in passing, but. There's a point it could get uh, quite the real experience because eh? you have to go to school during the in the morning, but you don't have fare to go to school. You don't have lunch, so you have to milk the cow. Take the milk to certain homes, make sure they buy it. Then you come back with the change, and then that's what you go with to school. In the evening, you come. You want to study, but you can't. You have to make sure the everything is is is, is intact. The cows are well fed. Wamenda um, kulala, mahindi that was. Uh, uh, um, uh, aired in the morning, you have to bring them back in the house. By the time you are done, you are so tired and the cycle continues. Uh, it will be a struggle also to get meet some of the basic stuff I would compare peers would have in those days, uh, whether it's, it's just a much more <laughs> nice uniform. Uh, we'd use ours for such a long time. The books. Will you, will you change anything with the child looking back? If you are to be told you, you have a chance to change something. You change anything? Well, I'll, I'll drink more tea with Mandazi and Escort <laughs> than Rabuoni, but <laughs> but but everything else probably not. I, I think the experience was was worth it. It it it, it helped me learn a lot of things uh, and perspective. And and you know, uh, the village life, whether it's not the best of a perspective you compare with the city life, it's satisfactory on its own. So. I wouldn't call it also we were destitute because we could feed, we could eat, we were eating in Uma. Only that if I was in Nairobi, I would be eating bread and, and butter. Yeah, and I didn't know any better, so I was super satisfied with it. Now looking back now is when I see, oh, that was quite the struggle. You know, doing homework in school so that you go back home because you can't do homework at home. By then it sounded like it's just a normal thing. Yeah. But now you look back and you... You live and make jokes. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's now just that you're an adult, you've lived in a much more... Uh, civilized society and it has exposed you to so much then you look back and there was a difference it wasn't that bad it was manageable but it also helped us uh, get to learn how to survive certain aspects of life that it throws at you at this age yeah where are your peers some of the people you grew up with in the village do you do you do you still keep touch do you know where they are are there those you already <laughs> made it to the city with them uh -huh. I know one is getting ordained as a priest next month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but also, they are, they are, we are all in different levels of life. Some of my peers is a guy like Edwin Ouma, who we were in the same primary school, high school, campus, and now we, we are with him here in Nairobi, and, and uh, sort of nearly equivalent level, because then we've moved at the same pace. But then there are those who, again, you know also, life just doesn't throw everyone the same piece of it. Yeah? So there are those who, I know, the situation is slightly different, and, and 
uh, I, I know they are trying to cope with what it has brought to them lakini the coping they're also is, the they are still in the village so and, and all that what, what goes to your mind when you go to the village and you meet some of these friends of yours you went to school with mm. and, and, and what are they doing some of them what are they doing um well they are managing so they are, they, the most common denominator is they are all married <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 usually they have kids and, and that's a level of progress um financially there's always a bit of a struggle here and there uh because then the economic status also back up country especially if your output is not much then you can't i don't want to say that they're doing badly off yeah, yeah but you'd say especially if they the all day they are doing alcohol mm-hmm. uh, that a, a bit scares me and and i always wish life to you at them something slightly better um there are those who are satisfied with where they are and and when we go we just blend and ah so this is what you do hey he shows you what he has done easy matafari amechoma metengeneza and those are okay yeah the only challenge is those who now they are into the alcohol you don't have the same reasoning level uh when they see you they don't want a conversation with you they just want you to leave them 50 bob or 100 shillings so that they go add another one those are the ones you you feel a bit emotionally overwhelmed that oh this is quite and quite something you, Becca, what mm. do they ask you when you meet some of these friends of yours what do they talk to you about what do they tell you they they speak from a point of they wish they were you they wish they were like you they wish they were living or are they do they just look satisfied and life is moving on do they even look happier even than you mm. well there are those who are definitely happy with <laughs> <laughs> the boys is going a lot yeah. more happier. Yeah? Yeah. There are definitely those who are a lot happier and you'll blend on anything. Yeah? Say, ah, let's take a walk here in the village and, and that's okay and, and and those are the most of the time you'd find me with them because then it's easier to have a conversation when all of you are okay with what you you have and what you are doing. And then the ones who sort of feel that they're in a way different position, probably they feel that hey, I'm at a lower position. You'd find that even that goes into their steel. So somebody sees you doesn't want to hold a conversation with you sometimes you meet someone and you want to say hi and you talk ah, how have you been and they tell you oh i'm running an errand here so they find a way to escape and, and so there's all those people in the entire spectrum there are those you'll have a nice candid conversation what you're doing what they are doing there are those who even say let's share opportunities you if you get this i can do this eh? this is what i can do within my skill set and and those are always very encouraging but then and and some of them we've had opportunities that they come in transition also into the city but the ones who sort of just want to evade the conversations and you know esteem issues also come into play you also just put it to rest as such yeah that is interesting mm. so like i want you to remind people mm. i get confused by these two counties yeah <laughs> 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 uh, you know, you know, every time you ask people so nyanza you know yeah. just assumes we go re homa bay the internet yeah. there yeah. people don't yeah. know the difference yes what will you say so you come from which county and trust you me even the id doesn't know the difference yeah. because migori was homa bay district <laughs> before yeah i was born in migori yeah. uh, which was under homa bay district mm-hmm. um, but now migori is a county of its own homa bay is a county of its own and this is the demarcations so homa bay uh, just starts off as soon you as you exit what you'd call katito eh? <laughs> so so the sondumiriu uh, as soon as you're done with that area so sondumiriu power generation plant i think that's a bigger landmark to associate with then the entire stretch of lake victoria all the way to kindu bay and then you climb as if you're coming back and then there's a place called road company road company <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, what it means. yeah well well there are myths and misconceptions about how they say it was a road company but then the luo man could not pronounce it rightly so they call it road copan um, um and then that stretch eh? so if you're coming that way you're within homa bay in dewa then after that now you start bigori progressively up to the border with Tanzania Sirare is Bania border that is entire stretch we going we going comes all the way and it also cuts off at the Kisi uh, border point eh? yeah and then it comes back just as soon as you hit Kisi then now you're done with Migori completely yeah, yeah. so you are from Homabe Now talk about Homa Bay and, and I know that is associated with a lot of pretty native and we welcome it no, 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 no. <laughs> I come from Kisi yes And, and and there is usually this comparison people normally want to compare themselves from the neighboring county yes so for us we have this push and pull relationship with kisumu, kisumu. yes yes understand yeah, yeah so do you have the same with migori county 
we don't do we don't even know they exist we, don't even <laughs> we know yeah. they are rowdy they are yeah. good at uh, throwing stones yeah. some of them will disagree <laughs> <laughs> we take our credit that we may not speak the best of Swahili yeah. in, uh, in town. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. But they are brothers. It's nice to hear. So that then makes you a law. Yeah, Homabi. Yes. Homabi, uh, law from Homabi. Yes, yes. Are you proud? I'm you super proud. If you ask me to introduce myself in Kijalu, I tell you Anjaka Chonyawagwe Kobiero Dagi Lodge. My parents, great grandparents, they just come by the edge of the lake. Eh? So they, they, there's no fence between them and the lake. <laughs> so the lake is their fence, like the demarcation of land. Eh? And, and, and uh, they, they've grown up there. When I was a kid, they used to visit my grandparents. And, and I'm definitely proud. I know in the current context in our country, there's always the inclination to always not be proud of your culture and some people may assume that because i have two english names yes. that i'm running with it I'm, I'm uh, yes well. yes exactly but that is because those were what my parents gave me you'll yeah. hear my siblings names you'll be surprised our last one is called george bush <laughs> <laughs> Bush, I'm sorry I had to say. <laughs> my brother who is after me is called David Kenneth. Our eldest bro is called Samuel <laughs> Felix. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> um, 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 yeah, yeah. Does it mean I'm, I mean anyway, um, I'm, I'm trying to evade uh, a, 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 a cultural connotation uh, completely, not at all. I'm definitely proud. That's why whenever I find uh, colleagues who we speak the same language, it's easy to blend in. Yeah. And, and, and you can always associate. But also there is, in the current context, you also know you just don't explicitly run into it. You also always have to weigh <laughs> at what point, because people treat cultural sensitivities differently. At one place it will be different. And, and, and so I also am alive to that fact. And, and so I wouldn't expel it every now and then. Hey, this is Jehovah Bay. Yeah. If it's not necessary. Yes, yes. But I'll never hide it. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. So what makes you... Because I also take a lot of pride in where I come from and who I am. And I would love to know what makes you proud to be who you are in terms of coming from Karachuan mm-hmm. and Luo. What is that one thing that stands out that makes you feel proud to be a Luo from where you come from? Steve Osim Boy is my village mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should I say I'm proud of that? Um, um, a number of things. We grew up in a culture that allows you to express yourself fully and, and it encourages you to be who you are. Uh, that is not something you'd find everywhere. If you re- read what some of these anthropologists say, you'll find that in certain cultures you are suppressed as a child. But from where I come from, you are allowed to express yourself. In fact, we have a saying that says, Kobiero Dagilot, Kobiero now is the actual village, Kabisa, is that we never accept defeat. So you're always the best at what you do. And that shapes who you are, that even in my own current situation, whether it's at work, it's association with people, I always strive to be the best of what I do. Because when I go back to the village and I find my peers, they're also the best at what they do. And so that's something I'm super proud, that my upbringing, my culture, allows you to express yourself fully and it pushes you to be proud of who you are and what you can do. And that's why there are certain sayings, people make fun of them, and all those. You realize what it actually connotates is even deeper, that you're not somebody who should at one point, you just lie low as an envelope, uh, so that you get what you want. You work for it. If you can't get it, do another means, which is legitimate, of course. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's something I'm super, super proud of, yeah. yeah. Mm. So, Thank you very much for giving us that background, Becca. It's very important for us to connect where you've come from up to where you are right now. Yeah. And then it will now make me even go further and ask you, then, which school did you go to in primary school? Um, I totally started from Nairobi, <laughs> very fast. Eh? So I went to Kangemi Primary. I went, then with my parents kept so moving. No, up to Kangemi Primary up to class three. I couldn't yeah. swim. I was taken back to the village. Yeah. Kangemi used to have swimming yeah. classes. <laughs> anyway, but my parents moved uh, to the village. I went to Lake Primary in Homabe. I went to Kadika Primary in Migori. I went to St. Francis of Assisi in Rongo. Um, which other school I think yeah, yeah for primary school the, the, the highlight is St. Francis because then we call it a CC campus that's where I met friends like Edwin Roy Alela and all that KCP. that's where I did my KCP so you've done your KCP then did you did you pass you know most 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 of us ish like ish we, it goes without saying so just tell those people <laughs> know, know where it just for the fear that my head teacher but will be watching did you, did you <laughs> eight subjects or five subjects um 
uh, that I was born the other day. <laughs> so we did five subjects. Five subjects. Yes. And out of the potential five and yes, I was very close. Let's say I was very close. You got one hundred. I, I I was very close. <laughs> I was very close to the 500 mark. Yes, yes. I, I was national school material. Excellent A's across the board. I got calling letters to a number of huge schools. Pogi was one of them. I got to Maseno and I'd already uh, got my uniform for a Pogi as well. Uh, but yeah, but I also got a calling to Mukumu boys uh, as well. Uh, Pogi boys was the first option and the last option for me because Mukumu boys is known for priests. So maybe you will not even okay. You're not even married. You still have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> you still have a chance of going to priesthood. But uh, we talk about that. You I'll tell you a to, story so about you that. I, I I went to Rapogi. My dad went to Rapogi. My younger bro went to Rapogi. Wow. So there's always a liking for Rapogi just because of the level of discipline you get there. It was a discipline school. Super. By the time I was joining, it was one of the disciplined schools or the most disciplined school in oh, the country. Indeed. In terms of discipline. They are still superb because you know there's institutional culture. Yeah. It just doesn't change over over time. But also Rapogi, that's why also Rapogi produces more priests. If you look in the region in South Nyanza, the highest number of priests are products of Rapogi as well. So it's also being a very strange Catholic school. And, and that instilled in me something. I wanted to be a priest, as you say. A story for another day, unless you ask of me now, okay. where the ambition stopped. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have this feeling. Yeah. I have this feeling uh, languages were your best subjects. Maybe I'm wrong, but you'll correct me. Ulikuwa usiku wa manane ghafla bin vu niliporauka machuo na mapema you can see the disconnect <laughs> yeah yeah english was my favorite so uh, swahili i was also good at it i remember in class 8 they could i mean in class 6 7 they could read my insha as an example to class 8 eh? yeah and we had a strong competition in primary likes of roy yeah? roy roy and, and brian sharon edwin so a strong competition eh? so, so then languages definitely became an inclination as well for sure yeah Oh, okay. mm. So you go to Rapogi? Yes. When you step into Rapogi, what catches your attention the first thing? People are running. <laughs> <laughs> People are just running. So in Rapogi, it was illegal to walk, near illegal. Of course, I'm not saying so that it's, they go investigate that. Is it illegal to walk? Literally, it was illegal to walk. Mm. That you always have to save time. Eh? So save time, Kijana, save time. So you rush to the toilet, you rush to the dining hall, and you'd wonder why are people running with their plates. When you get there, the form of service was communal. So the form ones are always the ones who serve. So they serve, and once you pick your plate, you're headed, you walk as you eat, you're going to wash your plate. And it has uh, one of the bad habits I picked to date is I eat super fast. We start eating and I'm well, done. Where it came from? Yes, yes, right. You're wondering why you take only a minute and you're done. And you're done because oh. you take your plate and, and you're walking to wash it. You're not sitting with it. Once you get closer, you run. You're running back to school, to class even before the time. The bell should always find you in the destination. So that was one thing. Please that you. Because if I'm coming into a school and the mm. first thing I'm seeing people running around everywhere, I yeah, get scared. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's confusing. The other one was dawn, mm. going for dawn preps. I love sleep. Mm. I, I love sleep. Today. Even now. You'll tell me. You'll yeah. tell me now because you know people sometimes associate people who love sleep with laziness, and I keep telling people that. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll Bill, Bill, like that, Bill, like. Bill gets sleeps up to seven a.m. So, say, so, say so that. does so does so does Mark Zuckerberg. So you believe there is no relationship between sleeping and. and, and Laziness. We can recommend to the viewers there's an excellent relationship between sleep and excellence. Mm. That the longer you sleep, the more your brain uh, performs perfectly well. So if you watch TED Talk, sleep is your superpower. Yeah. It talks about when those electrons are connecting at the point you're in deep sleep. But you need seven hours of sleep. That's why they say men who sleep less than seven hours, they have uh, the balls shrink <laughs> a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I'm sorry to say that, but, but also the testosterone levels, eh? yeah. so you age a lot faster. But also the brain activity. Our work is creativity. My work, which will come to, it depends on my brain to function. I, I, my productivity is out of my ability to think. So if I can't sleep enough, then I can't think. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But now how did you manage? Because in school, I remember back in high school. Mm. Uh, you <laughs> yeah, yeah, my friend, you cannot sleep. By eh? five o'clock, when yes. the bell just rings like yes. this, yes. there's already someone walking in the dorms just pushing people, people. and slapping everyone who's still asleep. Thank you. Was that the same story? In, in it was Rapogi? terrible. Even it was worse because Rapogi is in the sugar belt. If you know where Sony Sugar Company is, or if you ever know about Sony Sugar, so Rapogi is at the age of Sony Sugar, just closer there. It's a sugar belt. It's very cold. 
And one other surprising thing I was meant to say is I found people in, you're wearing shorts eh? in high school. We used to know you go to high school, you'll be in trousers. So it is super cold. And if you're from one and a form two, you have to wear short sleeve shirts and short trousers. So it's like life is punishing you for starting off again. For succeeding. It's for succeeding, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know you had beaten a class eight when I was a finisher. The top performers are in the village walking home. <laughs> yes, yeah. maize and sugar cane on the road. Eh? <laughs> uh, so I will tie my towel for dons and then you put it here. But if you are found, it was illegal. And then I had to become creative. I learned some nice sleeping style. If you go back to all my lot, guys, we studied together. They ask you the best sleeper is Decker. Yeah. Because I had every strategy. You put the book. Guys will come pick the book. So when the teacher comes and say, call for me those who are sleeping. And then I'm found without a book. You are beaten. You are punished. Then I became very clever. So I would hold the book. <laughs> so the piano works, guys. So I hold the book and then I sleep. So so anyway, I survived uh, miraculously. So I'd say, yeah. Tell them where you still sleep even up. <laughs> Like yes. Decker is asleep. Asleep. So tell them. Or I just leave it there. Right? You know, I wanted to become a priest, so we can't say I sleep in church, my friend. And, 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 and yeah. people will look up to me. There's no one who's perfected the art of sleeping during holy. Yeah. <laughs> the priest, just, and you have done it for years now. <laughs> The good thing I do is, before I come to church, I go through my own home. So those people who go to church in the Decker, please observe. <laughs> but just observe. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, I, I, I won't lie. Yeah. Sometimes I try. Yeah. Sometimes I try. <laughs> especially if you're doing the readings. Yeah. But I make sure so that I don't miss the homily much. Mm. So that I wake up in the morning, I've subscribed to Daily Reflections. So I get the homily for the day. I go through it. Yeah. So that should, in the eventuality, mm. the unlikely event that... The likely. <laughs> sleep during homily. I know a thing about two or two about today's gospel. Yes, yes. That is great. That is great, Deka. So I'm still at um, I'm still at Rapogi. So you get into Rapogi, you do all what it takes. What at when you're in school? What are you thinking at Rapogi? Are you think what are you thinking? Like what are you thinking? What are you doing? What are you trying to achieve at that particular point in time? Are you pushing yourself at that point because someone is trying to? tell you that they want a certain level of excellence or a certain level of performance or is there something that is starting to drive you mm. to a certain destination? Have you already come alive to the fact that life is a journey and there's a certain journey that you're trying to, a place that you're trying to go and you're already starting to work towards that? Or were you still uh, subconsciously studying just because your parents have sent you to work? Yeah. God bless the teachers at Rapogi for doing a marvelous job. They made sure that the very foundational principles of being a student at Rapogi yeah. is you know that this journey, you have to excel at it. And, and, and so we kept pushing ourselves. Of course, at some point, because we are young, you lose the bit that why am I working this hard? All we need is you have to work extra hard and there's always a strong punishment for not working hard. Because eh? everybody who has come there has the same level of brain thinking. Eh? You're all excellent at what you are KCP. Mm. Now you're on the same flat level. Now you also have to work hard again and the rat race continues. Eh? And so we used to work hard and you only recognize that top 10 and the bottom 10. So the top 10 for you to ever get recognized, you have to work towards it. But also in between here, there's lots of other punishments that come in between. Yes, yes, yes. But then also you can never deteriorate. If you work so hard and you are recognized as most improved, if you ever try to deteriorate, it's another whole pain at it. Eh? Yeah, but also the assemblies, I remember every Monday when the principal would come, he would make us feel so special. There's something mentality does before even the kenning, eh? yeah. that you can instill some, in somebody a mentality that excellence is your thing, exactly. And, and so we really used to work towards it. And they used to give us some of the best examples. That's a product of Rapoki. Excellence, that's a product of Rapoki. For example, Davji Bimjiatela, the current um, Kenya medical practitioner. Oh, dentist. He was actually our din uh, uh, dining hall captain. And he was a former one. A form one. <laughs> he was a DH captain. Yeah. Yeah, and we were with him in YCS. He was a very good boy on that side. But he comes to the dining hall. Yeah. Crazy. But of course, by then, they're also bigger examples. I tend to lose them because then we are the big examples. I think one of my friends was the schoolmate. Yeah. Was Arthur in your school? Arthur Oliver. Arthur, Arthur Oliver. 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 Yeah. Hey, mm. very good in languages. Yeah. Even today. Ah, yeah. Arthur is always very sharp. I call him Jambaka. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Arthur was an yeah. amazing chap as yeah. well. You can see the product. Yeah. Of okay, me, me to say the least, I'm the product you yeah. can see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so then now we also focusing on university. Of course, like everybody. So you had already started thinking about university. <coughs> university. It was not only about getting into top ten. You already thinking. Did you did you guys used to do this thing? I remember when I was in school. I would go. I would go and look at the previous year's results. So if people who managed to go to the university were let's say forty, mm. yeah, every time you you look at yourself on that performance list, you don't want to see yourself anywhere past forty because you you're telling yourself. If today people want to go to the university, then I'm out. Understand? Because a B plus, so you start looking where where are the B plus studying? Yeah, yeah. So you work you work towards making sure that I'm at the B plus and above. Mm-hmm. Was that happening in your school, or guys were not very much aware? Of? Ooh, that's that's quite a strategy. For us, it was the grade. You always just knew that if you're not the B plus or A minus, you're going nowhere. Like the C pluses, you are not counted because those are the bottom. Yeah. So everybody was always working towards an A, A minus, A, A minus. That is what even they give value to us then as students at that time. And so that's what we were working towards. And then we were always meant to know what a, uh, a grade could get you to study. That if you get an A of this, you do this. So you are from one or from two, you know what cluster points are. So you start working even your subjects, even how you choose your subjects. That if I take X, Y, and Z, and in each of them I score grade X, Y, and Z, then I get an opportunity to become neurosurgeon. Of course, that dissipates by the fourth year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so you 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 come out of uh, you come out of. Mm. But before I even go there, mm. where is she? Um, where is she? Who? <laughs> where is she? Where is she? Who? Everyone has a story of a she in, in, in high school. Ah, oh, she's married to some France guy, eh? Yeah. Uh, can I mention the name? <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. And you know, I saw her yesterday from online. School, from which school? Uh, Ulanda. You Ulanda, know, Ulanda was killing us. Uh, I got suspended because is, I went is to Ulanda see. The best, is, is that the best pool of uh, high school? Uh, Every school had their pair. Uh, Ulanda was our pair, but we used to share it with Kanga, share them with Kanga, and and we used to fight academically that Ulanda girls were very treacherous. If Kanga beats you guys in KCSE, they move to Kanga. If you beat Kanga, they come back. So they used to give us a strong challenge, and I remember in the year before us, the guys did us justice that they beat Kanga. So Ulanda girls were ours. So there's a day, half time, I, I, I'm going to say hi to them. At the, we used to share the also same bus stop. Then I meet my... Anyway, another story. I was suspended. I never did my mock. Yeah, yeah it, and it's a long story. It's, <laughs> call me another session. We just yeah. talk about... So, so uh, the question is, during your year, yes. did you guys do your, your, your friends justice by beating Kanga High School? Um... Uh, we beat a lot of schools. <laughs> we, beat, we beat a lot of schools, including Maranda. Kanga was a small thing. You know, Kanga has always been a small thing. I know Edwin is watching, but Kanga has been a... It was never an issue. It was an issue for other people. For us, we would beat them seriously. But anyway, yeah. So she's in France. She's married to some nice guy. I saw her on the uh, internet the other day. And, and I'm happy that she's happy uh, there. Yeah, yeah. I could have pulled my socks a little bit, but... Whatever happens, happens. happens man. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you are, you leave Kanga, and 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 and, and now, William Day. For the first time, for the first time in your life, mm. you're coming out of the vicinity of Nyanza Province. <laughs> <laughs> Going to another village in Kases. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're living, you're living in Nyanza Province. Yes, yes. A village boy has now left yes. the great in Nyanza Province. Yes. And you're entering the great village of what? Kases. Who want to me? Kases. <laughs> How different are these two environments? Well, well, more university is based in Kesas, in Eldred. But the environment of a university is so cosmopolitan that the village doesn't count where it's located. Yeah. It, you, you are in a university complex. And, and, and the, the, the exposure itself was massive. Yeah. I think I'm happy that I went to Moi in Kesas because that upgrade would have been too much if, if I came right in the middle of CBD in Nairobi. I couldn't survive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, I did a bit. But now, yes, your question. I go to Kesas, a lovely place, mingled with the society around there. And I like how the society around the university very much in harmony with the university itself. But then you're inside the university premise, it's very cosmopolitan. You meet people from other schools, some are from those schools you admired, some of them are from the cities you always admire. And so there's a huge exchange of ideas. The first social gathering I go to is MUCSA, Mo University Catholic Students Association. Guy, I'm from Nairobi Diocese, and like, oh, this is how Nairobi people look. So let me hear 
are what they say. Oh, this is how they talk. This yeah. is how they think. Yeah, yeah and so there was a, there was a transformation. Exactly. Progressively. So you 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 went to do what? Yeah, um, Pandora's box. I went to study informatics. So informatics is like information systems processing. So you are doing a programming here, artificial intelligence, everything nice in the concept of IT. Very lovely and complex uh, course. Imagine in, in 2012 we had a unit called artificial intelligence. We are in 2023 is when probably some people are getting to learn about AI at this point. Yeah, I even printed a T-shirt called intelligence, and some colleagues didn't like me for that. They thought I was saying I'm intelligence. It's because I was I was just in love with artificial intelligence as a course by then. So that's what I studied. But once in a while, I shouldn't be heard saying this loud. I'll escape go to where media students are being taught and argue with the lecturers and they would think ah he's also a media student yeah because I also loved it you know progressively you learn what you you are actually meant to do yeah. so in the university when i went to do informatics it's because everyone at home was saying ah who kijana kumzui in it and the one just sounds complicated yes yes just yes complex and uh, yes yes it just looks and because they because they could see me with the, remember father william decker he donated a number of computers at home so there used to be some computers there and i was the only child who took interest in those computers i would play games i'm a mon word at so they see a young boy on a computer they think i'm very tech savvy <laughs> <laughs> then they say this one should go study IT. So everybody has said you have to study it, my friend. You are so good at it that if you don't do it, who will ever do it? Yeah, but progressively, maybe George Bush. Maybe George Bush. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So for, then yeah. over time, you learn the university. <laughs> yes, George Bush. Hey, Bush, forever. I, I'm sorry I brought your name on this podcast. But over time, you learn that the university education is meant to open your mind to know what you actually really need to do and what you can do. And then I learned that actually I can move into communication. So I entered the student press club. I became an editor in chief at second year. Young guy and people thought I was a fourth year because I would write and write and write articles. Twice the articles I wrote got students to go on strike. And you know when you start doing that people start noticing this guy can move people emotionally with his words. And that's how I got even to student leadership because now I was in charge of communication also as the editor in chief. So I served in the student governing council. Of course after a failed attempt to vie for chairman in my school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you you realize you have a gift yes in communication. Mm. And communication in this case means what? You were able to uh, just come up with ideas or you pick people's ideas and then you communicate it to a big mass of people. Was it your origin? Were you communicating your original ideas or you were just picking up what people want to talk to? Some of the people in the university want to convey to the, to the students and mm. put them together and then you send them out. I would say it's a bit of both, eh? Yeah. Um, as a person I learned to express myself even when I'm saying something completely <laughs> unnecessary that I would express it nicely and people would get convinced by it I said no this is not everybody's cup of tea I remember there are times when my student my classmates will be in, have certain grievances because there's also a class rep but they really want to go against the teacher completely as we want to strike hold placards and then I just say certain things and then guys calm down when I go to the lecturer I realize that the grievances they had can be listened to they said oh I can be an interlocutor here I communicate on both sides yeah. and everyone will be happy everyone will be sort of happy there's a day somebody once posted then that by then we didn't have all these whatsapps and everything we only had facebook and facebook had groups yeah. yes there was to go of course to go I remember my girlfriend of to go anyway on 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 facebook so we had what we call the real comrades of Moi University. That was the most powerful platform for students. It was politics. So whenever I write something, somebody, the first comment you see, somebody says, don't read it, it's by William Decker. He will convince you that the best way to not get convinced is not to read what William Decker said. Mm. Because if you read it, even if you had a divergent opinion, mm. then I said, but this is good. Some people would call me PR machine. Mm. So then progressively, you learn, okay, maybe this is what I can do. Some friends told me, capitalize on that. Mm. That people see you as a PR machine and you know people used to con- uh, conceive PR as spin doctor you're just changing things mm. but me I looked at it that if I can bridge a communication gap that is not existing here that if somebody wants to talk to someone and I am the one who talks in between they get to listen to each other then probably that's where my career is so then I said let me get this degree then I think about what I want to do now in this other aspect yeah okay. mm. so so did you change does that mean you change your 
I never changed my course. I loved it to the end and I graduated with it. I developed a system for nominations because it was the final project. And still I have the skills programming. I remember when I said I'm not doing this thing once more. <laughs> is when I became now uh, IT assistant, support assistant for my internship at Desta, my university now. <laughs> uh, and, and I said, hey, this work. So I'm solving people's problems every day. Oh, my cable is what's IT yes, 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 yes. I, I think those people <laughs> Yeah, it reached a point I picked, I printed a placard and uh, if somebody comes, I show them there. So do you know what it used to say? Have you switched it off and on? <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And, and the computer will be back to life. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Then now you know what level of problem you are dealing with. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice, Nika. I see now where the story began. Mm. Because now it introduces me to it introduces me to now your your, your life on campus. There's this situation. You leave campus, you don't know where to start. Everyone starts somewhere. You leave campus with a degree in informatics, yeah? Right? Yes. And then you still have this passion in media. What goes through your mind? The first thing, should I look for a job to just continue doing this IT stuff? Yeah? Or should I start modeling myself into becoming a media personnel, personality? Because William Decker by itself is a name that can be sold around. Yeah? And I think you have your parents to thank for that. Because, like I told you, <laughs> yes. some people buy William Lawson mm. just for the name. Yes. Some people yes. buy all this. Um, Big mm. brands are people's names. Yeah. People just don't know. Mm. Even Mercedes is someone's name. Yeah. Yeah. Even it's Dell, a good example. Yeah. Even, <laughs> <laughs> even Dell is someone's name. Uh -huh. So when I when I when I hear William <coughs> Becker is a brand by itself. Right? Yeah. Mm. But now I'm asking you, you leave campus. What's the first thing that you think? I say I want to look for a communication job. So remember when I was a student, I, 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 what I did to make sure is that my writing improved over time. So I would write an article, I post it on Real Comrades on Facebook, then you get a call from Standard, can we publish this article? Yes. And they say, okay, fine. Yeah, I me, mean, I don't mind if you publish, then they publish. They say, can you become a regular writer? So I will try it and I will write student stuff and, and I used to have very intriguing titles. Most of them was humor. I, I loved writing a lot on humor, but also student life. So then I'm still writing these articles, but I'm not writing for money. I'm just writing because I'm passionate. But what it did, it was sort of transitioning me and opening a door that because I can write for newspaper and I'm published, then I can start looking for communication jobs. And that's where do I start? I start looking for PR firms. So I've, I've, I've done some bit of hustling here and there as we always do in the city. By the fifth month, you're so frustrated. Eh? You feel like you're not going anywhere. But with time, you learn that's part of the process, but I'd not learned that. So I'm so frustrated. So one day I said, this has to change. I'm doing things the same day, the same way. I don't think I'll get the same results. Then I listed 10 companies that if I got jobs with them, I would be so happy. It's a mix of agencies and normal, including the safari cops. But I said, let me take five agencies first. Agencies are like PR firms who do communication for other bigger companies. And then I say, these five, what do they want? They want somebody who can do this. Then I look at what can I do? If they want a writer, I have. Somebody who can manage social media, maybe I can. But if they want a videographer, I have a few skills in photography and etc. But what I don't have is media relations because I don't have media contacts per se. So I will see my own gaps. But then I call. That my name is William Decker. Um, I see your company. I see you have this. Uh, this is what you do. Uh, would it be okay if I volunteer? They say, no, we are not looking for volunteers. I say, no, just let me just drop my, my CV. For the sake. So I was very persistent. They say, okay, fine, send it to InfoArt. I'm like, hey, InfoArt, you are Itafungulua this year. And I say, can I copy someone? Can I copy you yourself? They say, no, copy HR. Okay, what's HR Zimbel? And then I copy. Then once they have accepted that part, before I hang up, I say, how about I drop a physical copy? They say, no, 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 you've already written an email. You don't need to drop a copy. I say, it's fine. Let me just drop in case that's okay with you. I say, fine, fine, drop it then. Then I will customize that cover letter to that job. I will talk of what skills I have, what I, I can do, and what I can learn. Not what I don't know. <laughs> and then I take it. So I would take even a whole day just to apply for one job, even two days. Then I send email, then I plan for drop-off. So by then I called five companies. I wrote five emails. Then I planned for drop-offs, drop-offs, drop-offs. What I didn't know, but now I know, is the more I was persistent, they would say, this guy is different. And when you drop them in person, they will see the person themselves and say, no, probably this is a different but person. But are they allowing you to reach the people you need to be? 
that was always the challenge you'll always the be watchman. told leave it at the reception or something i made sure the watchman i would not say i'm going to see her child mm. i just say i have an appointment uh, and, and it was at this time and i'll make sure can i bring it at this time eh? so then i skip that part at the reception i know i won't pass but i have dropped it i'm pretty sure it might get its way so out of the 10 five that i called were very receptive there was a sixth one which was not receptive and I knew, I mean, the fifth one, which was not so receptive. And I said, these ones, they may not give me a job. But the other four, they all called me for interviews after that. And I only went for one interview and I was taken. And this one interview that I was taken, they didn't have the role. But when they saw my application, they realized they had a gap. They needed somebody for that role. But they needed everything done procedurally. So they created a vacancy. 26 people applied. I was the best candidate out of the seven interviews they conducted. So I said, oh, this is a good strategy. So I was selling that strategy to other people, and I always tell them that you, you just map out what you want to you do. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so that's how I got into agency. Mm-hmm. So in agency, I have my tech skills. I'm doing website here. I'm managing. Agency? You know, we might be talking about agency, and someone is wondering. Uh-huh. Agency. An agency is a PR firm. You can have a marketing firm. Uh, the way lawyers have their own consultancy, mm-hmm. Ahuya and Obote. Mm-hmm. Uh, advocate, something of the sort. So you find an agency, they call it a very nice name, Gina Dean, for Gina Dean herself, Ogilvy, Red House PR, uh, Creative Marketing, etc. So that's an agency because it brings an ex- uh, a pool of experts in different uh, uh, skills and they're all doing one job. So if at all uh, you have your company, Dan Robert International, and you want uh, some communicative aspect and PR and marketing, then they come as a package. So for one amount of fee you are paying, you get designers, social media managers, marketing, they are the same people who will give you media, they are the same people who will handle your events, they'll do monitoring and evaluation, your social media, it's always a good pack, because you're finding, you're paying one organization, but they're doing for you everything. So agency, you're learning, because you, you are not the expert in maybe creative writing and speeches, there's always an expert there, you review their works, so you learn. So it was a very fast learning environment. And, 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 and How much were they paying? Um, if it was not 15,000? My first salary was 15,000. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, yes. Then I went to 25,000. Then I went to 33,000. I was like, wow. I, 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 was like, I can be paid. I can be paid this money. Wait for Edmund. You almost flew to the village. Wait for Edmund. And then they deduct it. You have 21. I need back my 25. Yeah, yeah. I remember my first deduction. I cried literally. I was like, what is wrong with these people? The contract said 33,000. Why am I having less? Ah, yeah, then, then, yeah. So, so, so you are now. Now, where do you go? And remember, I've, I've, I've signed the contract and I moved houses. Yeah. 33,000, I moved to an SQ for 12,500. Oh, yeah. Now, if you've left me with the 21, you have yeah. killed me, my friend, because now I'm left with 9,000. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. And, and you know, I was already announcing they have gotten a job. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, black, and black tax is now not here. Hey, that thing it knocks as soon as you leave the bus. Uh, <laughs> they don't care how you landed in Nairobi, but anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so you get the agency job, mm-hmm. and and I'm glad that you said you hustled your way into your first job. How was that life in between there when you asked me? Like, what was it like? What was life like during that time? Yeah. Is it is it a good is it a good time that you would want when you remember that period? <laughs> You only wish it on your ass. I always thought I'm a patient person. Yeah. Uh, then I realized, especially with uh, career and all that. Eh? But there's that period, especially within that first year, even the roles that you get, they're not like the best of what you'd want. And, and it's a life full of frustrations. You wake up in the morning and you wonder, hey, I have to go through another full day, 12 hours awake without a job. I'm in the cyber the whole day applying and they don't even send you. Home, yes, yes, everything. and they don't send you. I'm living with my cousin and I have to go eat his food again and I don't have a job. And this guy is so patient with me. I just wish I could get a job so that even me one day I pay for the fish at during supper. I, yeah, and, and the funny part, not just funny, but what even exacerbates the situation is you're with your peers around. Some of them are in that frustration. But there are those who have really excelled really fast. Eh? So you feel like a failure. That 
probably did do the right thing i didn't do the right course and i know somebody who's listening now may be feeling the same yeah. way you feel like i didn't do the right course this life is and you know when you hear the news the unemployment statistics you say oh it's it not it yes 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 so, so so it's discouraging and sometimes that's what can actually break you because then you stop at that point i know of a friend who we were hunting at job hunting at the same period he says they can i can't do this i have our village and there's food there and and nobody devalues me when i go back there but now he went back so there's always a perseverance then over time i learned also it's not just the first year it's not just the second year even up to the third year that it's a transitional period between campus and the third year whatever you get i think you should just run with it by the fourth year then you're starting to stabilize by the fifth year if you're in something chances are that that's what you're going to now stick to career wise for a long time yeah that is good it's good that you you're encouraging people because i know that 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 phase of life can can break you that phase mm. of life can break your heart so, so many people are still in that phase mm. and and they're wondering how could god just have forgotten about me just like that yeah? and um and i'm and i'm i'm interested now in the next phase of of your life so you get this job now 21000 at least but you can afford a house for what you say 12000 yeah and you mean with 9000 how you survive it <laughs> at that particular point do you yeah. think of, of of hanging out do you even think of what do you do with 9000 so on a month basis my philosophy at that point and it has always been my philosophy if i get a job i live closer to it so that the first 3 to 6 months i give it my best yeah. then you forget over time then you give it so the first 3 months with this 9000 i was walking home in the evening like in the morning but i would stay at work for longer hours then the employer starts seeing the value you create then now they, they reward that value so it's increased at some point but within those months i, I didn't have much i could do eh? you always indoors and you know your mattress unakuja unalala the weekend i will stay in the office up to 2 am then i just walk and then i go home then once in the morning guys wake up at 6am they find me in the office and the only thing is you'd see if i'm limping then you know i didn't sleep because then if i i don't sleep well i lose coordination of my limbs eh? yeah but then i would give my best uh, try to be business development within the company bring in clients that we had never had some were multinationals and and for my substantial salary at that point yeah <laughs> yeah i just make sure we are not eating out and eating in the house just some aspects of discipline eh I mapped out I needed only 4000 a month for food and that's what mattered. These are the 5000 it can cut off for black tax, yellow tax and all those things, yeah. you know yellow tax. Yeah. Yellow. <laughs> <laughs> I only know black tax. But then What if you add another word to what I just said? <laughs> Thank you. We can proceed. <laughs> Okay. I'm very interested in that phase of life because something happens in between here. And like you say, because you're still a very young man. But your life now is not your life then. There is a tremendous growth that happens between a short period of time in between. And someone who knows you, for the people who know William Deka, I'm sure they'll be asking What is this one thing that stands out so much about William Deka that life seems to be giving him exactly what he's asking for that I am not doing because some people you have grown up with some people you've gone to school with some people you even started working together what is just that one thing that you did different that you can say took you to another level as compared to the people who started this journey the career journey I slept longer. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, one thing I acknowledge and I thank God is is that then progressively I think I've been in a position of privilege over time but because somebody once at some point held my hand even when I just started the career the fact that I had a quite the attitude to learn and my boss there uh, has become my friend to date and a mentor just held my hand. That is the same job the one that you got to do as well. Well, let's not mention ah. figures because she may watch. Oh. Yeah, and, and she say I'm announcing the salary is wow. here. She he he she he he he. he, 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 he. Yeah. Them, them, them. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 the attitude of learning it, it allowed me to be embedded in people who could mentor me. And and I think we all need that. That then you start learning 
How do they get there? I would wonder, how does this person really stay in the office for so long? And they are the boss. They should leave early. You come the, the next day, you find them. That's how I give you the attitude of staying longer and coming early. Because I'm learning just by example. But then they will also throw you in the deep end. You do it, you do it. You'll give it to me when it's done. Eh? But then they put a little pressure here and you get it done. So then I learned perfection. That done, it just doesn't come. And especially for us young people, we stay in the comfort that I'm a young person. That's an excuse enough that they'll understand. They shouldn't understand because you're a young person. You should actually put yourself in a position of privilege that you're such a young person who works so hard. And, and, and that's how I started doing it. But then the other things probably you'll be asking me later, the aspect of continuous learning. So remember I'm in a profession that I'm not meant to be in. So it means technically I'm a quack. So I start learning, do certifications, uh, add additional courses, I did integrated marketing communications, a certificate issued by the IE Business School in Spain. Mm. From the UK, I also took on a professional diploma on charter, from Chartered Institute of Public Relations, uh, a PR diploma. And, and, and that's a professional course, it's level seven master's equivalent. And I said, the learning doesn't stop there. I've always said that at every step, let me map my five years from now, where do I want to be? So then I will say, if I want to be there, this is the gap, because it needs me to have done this, this, this and that. You see, when we apply for jobs and it tells you five years experience, a degree in X, Y and Z, a master's, we always assume them and we just apply. For me, every time I was applying, I was like, so this is what I don't have, I will add this. This is what I don't have. I will add this. And what else can I add, which may not be necessary at this point? And, and, and that's how I transition. I don't know if we are reaching that point now where I want to be, but but uh, do I proceed? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so then I realized <clears throat> I want to be a communication person who can communicate with my technical knowledge, my tech aspect. And I was doing it so well. Then progressively, I realized that uh, I also probably want to communicate in another niche, which is health communication, which is not really ah. so many experts around okay. it. Probably there are a few of them. Yeah. And growing up from my home abbey, I've come across so many health challenges. I could not be a doctor, but from a communication standpoint, I could do something. So I said, then let me even go do a development communication master's and then focus it on health communication. As we speak, um, yesterday, I submitted my thesis. Hopefully, if I get to defend next week, then hopefully in 39 days from today, I get to graduate and they say, William Decker is an expert in development communication. So I also learned the continuous learning and amassing more skills. Then it paves way, it paves way. And then in between, there are also a few other sacrifices. There are times I will get a job that pays a lot of money, but it's not in the niche of what I want to do. And you have the offer. Yeah. Then I will reject it. And I will look like a fool among my peers. But I just knew there's something I really, really want because I want this other experience. But not everybody has that luxury because also at this stage, we are economically sometimes disadvantaged, especially if you're in the city and, and you don't have many godfathers. So you want to take anything that comes your way. So there's also that tough balance, which I can't say what worked for who, but for me what worked, it, I had to sacrifice a few things here. Even in the agency life, I could get other offers to go do other jobs. But I was like, let me stay here a little longer. Okay, let me just add a few months. Okay, nights are here. Let me add another one more year. And then I learn things. And then I learn things, yeah, progressively, yeah. Oh, so I'm, I'm, I'm learning something out of you, Deca, that, uh, you know, there has been this conversation that you have <coughs> of whether employment or self-employment. Mm. And from a very, at a very high level, people just go, no, employment is not a good. People mm. need to do, you need to go your own way. You need mm. to, build a business for you to become wealthy, for you to mm. become rich. You just have to use this self-employment avenue. But from what I'm hearing from you, you are confirming to people that the constant thing about, between both two, the, both options, the constant thing is commitment and just immersing yourself into making yourself better every single day. Yeah. And even if you do it, whether you're self-employed and you're doing it as an employee in an organization, you can still get to the heights that you desire as a human being. So I want you just to demystify that, that you don't necessarily have to go and get self-employment or become an entrepreneur or set up a business for that matter, for you to experience some of the successes that people have in this world. You, which one do you, do you believe? Do you believe in the avenue that you've taken? Do you believe both ways can lead you home? What's, what's your opinion on that? Yes, thank you, Dan. Well, Dan, that's a good question because there are people who, uh, for them, employment is 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 the course uh, until pension and 
uh, and luckily I'm one of those <laughs> and then there's all those who business works for them so I think if it works for you what matters is the discipline you put through it I've seen some of my colleagues who employment excels for them and of course is how best do you improve yourself in that condition of employment do you upskill increase the skills you have but also knowledge as well and then you grow your horizon so that you can expand through for somebody who is business how best do you expand your business understanding the entire market and improving on it so for those if business works for you I'd never say anything on the contrary if employment works for you also let you not be told anything on the contrary yeah. so employment uh, has definitely worked because I've tried business and I've <laughs> lost a lot of money. So my answer is business has not worked for me. Yeah, work. Employment may be working for me progressively. Yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So so then, uh, speaking of employment, I'm seeing trophies in front of us. Will you maybe just say something about what we are seeing here? Um, yes. So as an employee, <laughs> uh, this is Young PR Professional of the Year 2019. I was... Uh, younger than uh, 28 years old so you win these trophies if you're younger than 28 years old and you're good at what you do in communication so so in 2021 i was still younger than 28 <laughs> and so i won the second one yeah. i wanted to win them consistently until age caught up with me yeah. but what it shows is that you do a good job in what you do in terms of pr which is a full spectrum of things and some people misconstrue pr to mean spin doctoring and changing things that are dirty you clean them to the surface but pr is a general concept aligning your audience is reality to that of the organization or the company and also then the communicative aspects generating content writing video production audio uh, giving uh, sort of communicative advice crisis communication how do you uh, help an organization get out of a crisis through the communicative part <coughs> uh, fortunate in event let me use an example in the past like for example KQ crashes in Douala <coughs> And then there are a lot of things moving at the same time. There's anxiety in the country. There's a business aspect to it that everybody is fearful. Probably flights have been grounded. And then there's also the organization, the employers. I mean, the employees themselves. We've lost an entire plane with crew and passengers. It's a whole complex situation as a country. It's a moment of grief. But then even more painful is those who have lost people within that. So how do you get out of that situation from a communicative standpoint? That how do you communicate that you lower the levels of anxiety? The country is well informed, but genuinely informed, but not informed of things that do not really necessarily need to go out there. Two, how do you keep people informed, but you come down the situation that the business operating environment still continues? How do you come the situation that the employees who are working still stay calm enough to keep running with the operations? And then how do you communicate more importantly that those who have lost members of the family, you do not tramp on that grief that they already have yeah. by the way you communicate exactly and, and so about ownership or if a bank has been uh, uh, got allegations that they, they, they are money laundering mm. so what a spin doctor would say we are not money laundering actually we are very good people but what will a PR person do a PR person will advise the bank that first of all align with the authorities investigate if they're investigating cooperate then you'll come with a communication yes we are cooperating with the, we've heard about these allegations about money laundering we are cooperating with the authorities to investigate. When the full report comes out, we'll definitely share with the public. In the meantime, from the preliminary investigations, two of members of our staff who are linked with the investigation so far, or which investigation has pointed towards to, have been put on suspension to allow room even for further investigations. Yeah, yeah. As a company, as a bank, we reiterate our commitment to open uh, kind of transactions and all that. And we assure you as a members of the public and other stakeholders that should any fault uh, come, individuals will bear responsibility. You know, such kind of a thing it restores trust. Yeah. So that level of communication is a management function. It's not something you just do so that you cover up on social media and counteract certain people through influencers. So now that's PR in its actual action. Yeah. So, so Neka, if you were to speak to someone out there who mm. is in school and they're doing PR, and mm. they're, they're looking forward to being, taking PR as a, as a career, mm. what advice would you put out does it pay? Does it bring? Does, does, yeah, does it have the capability to bring a good life, just like any other uh, career that people have elevated, like engineering, like yeah. medicine, like law? Mm. Uh, yeah. 
I can say without fear of shame that engineers suffer a lot. <laughs> Under the sun, monetary wise, maybe they are way better. I wouldn't say, but I think every career has value because all careers were created so that they fill a certain gap in the society. And I wouldn't want to say communication or public relations exalts way better than any other career. But I think once you hold it as your niche, can you be the best at what you do? Because then that gets rewarded. But if you can be so good at your communication, it's not just the trophy. It will also reflect by a number of things, remuneration, opportunities, etc. If somebody is in banking, can you be the best banker that everybody will say, there was once a banker, every coin was banked. Yeah. <laughs> just you <laughs> try to be Plato or some Socrates. Yeah, yeah but, but that kind of a thing. So, so if there is somebody, young person there, or older person, who still want to grow up and get into communication, I think it's a perfect opportunity. We always say communication makes or break. It doesn't matter the situation. I think even in organizations, if you can take a role in communication, it's very transformative. It tells impact. And and, and, and that's an opportunity you can't is, let go. Is, is language, is language equally as important as communication? Because when I listen to your English, it's, is it nature or nature? <laughs> <laughs> it depends with where you are born and how you are brought up and yeah. did you go to which primary school. Can uh, someone from the East Valley speak mm. the way you're speaking? Um, from Boma Bay, <laughs> yeah, I've tried. Um, I, I think definitely one has to grow their strength in, in, in language because then communication uses language as a medium, <laughs> as a platform that yeah. I'll only write using a specific language, I'll only speak using a specific language. And more importantly, in an age where everybody can communicate, then you must have probably a better opportunity to communicate if you have a better language, I think. But also, it's not just about the language itself, but diversifying. That if I learn English, I can also learn a bit of French, so that I'm also able to communicate with more people. We say language speaks to the heart. If you ever travel somewhere, you'll always want to associate with that language, even in the greeting, that um, Zungu comes today and he says, Jambo. So there's a way they resonate with us. Even if you go there uh, to Uganda and you want to say uh, Oliotia, just so that you associate. So language diversification is also an important aspect. But if you don't diversify, even the language you are at, it just perfect it. Yeah. Now that is, that is interesting. Uh, as we are coming towards the end of this uh, interesting and very uh, mind-blowing, mind-opening interview or conversation for that matter, uh, welcome us into a different space of your life where you have amassed uh, a lot of great success in your career. And of course, like you say, the journey continues. You achieve one thing and you're already looking at something else and something else and something else. At your current age, what, what are your dreams? When I grew up, I wanted to be a neurosurgeon. <laughs> um, well, definitely I also, I also exactly. I also have ambitions uh, from a social aspect or from a career aspect. Because we were speaking career, let me speak career aspect. I always try to map my career in the next five years. And, and one of the things I've always wished and hoped that I excel in it's not just communication per se, but a niche aspect, which is health communication. Having grown up in an environment where there are lots of health challenges, I'm not a doctor, but I know I can support in one way or the other, and communication is that. So I've always felt the need to move towards health communication. And that's why, as we were speaking earlier, I was saying uh, uh, Saturday, Yesterday, I just submitted my thesis. Yeah. So hopefully, if I get to defend this week, mm. then I get to graduate in 39 days from mm. today in uh, development communication masters, uh, focusing on health communication in my thesis. Very nice topic. I like being proud about it. Mm. Uh, the nexus, assessment of the nexus between awareness and vaccine uptake. But if I'm aware, can I take up a vaccine? Of course, knowing the role of vaccine in health, etc. And I found a very interesting aspect to it when I did my study. The more aware you are, you are three times likely more to take the vaccine. But I'll defend that on my uh, panel. Yeah. So uh, I'd like to be an excellent communication expert. It doesn't matter where I will be at that point. But I'd like to be, if you want to talk about health communication, look for that young man called William Decker and will your guy. Socially, where do I want to be? I think like every other person, we are social beings, we want to be surrounded by people, we want to surround people. 
I think eventually at some point I'd also like to be a family person. And at some point I wanted to be a priest until my last year in the university. Mm. Of course, luckily. You met this person. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. You know, in our family, I also know there was always an anticipation that is it Deca or who? And my elder brother decided to take up the, the journey towards it. He's still on his journey. Uh, that freed up a bit of the pressure. Yeah. But I still hear some sentiments, even when I read the Bible in the church, says, that can make a good priest. I'm like, hey guys, don't touch me yet. Mm-hmm. I, I think I decided I want to settle on this other you side of like, a... um, oh, what are you asking? Your <laughs> 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 uh, from a summon perspective, yeah. I, 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 I could make a priest. Yeah, I, 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 I have even uh, the, my soul here. Yeah. I have in English and Swahili. Sometimes I just read through it. Like, I like the Eucharistic prayers. They sound like some theological poetry mm-hmm. uh, at whose will he commanded you know those are english you just don't find everywhere so i think i love that aspect uh, but i think also socially I've, I've i've really transcended to this other side uh, where probably it's the point of no return <laughs> yeah. I, want to, I, want to, I want to touch on something about syllabus you know you know you yes know component. yes yes so you're okay with the, the other side it's just the, the syllabus part that uh, um, it's a bit of a challenge you know, I've not tried it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm neither here nor there. Speaking of which, yeah, yeah. Uh, the model in our community today, not necessarily in our community today, but successful, uh, ambitious uh, young men who the society embraces as a model to the rest are a very good fit yeah, for our ladies. And I would want to know at this particular point in your life. Now that you've already seen how you work so hard, you achieve so much, what is the reason why you have not thought about setting down? What will what will be the reason why a young man whose life seems to be whose life seems to have taken off? What will be the reason why such a man will not think of setting down yet? Mm. Wow, well, that's a tough question. Uh, I would like to dilute it by saying uh, it's a good conclusion that I've not thought about it. Mm. Uh, I may be thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but um, every, everybody has their specific timing, what works for them. Um, 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 and, and, and the pressure to settle down hasn't really set in that fast. I just hit third floor the other day. I've not even fully enjoyed my 30s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and so, and not that I really want to enjoy, mm. but I look at what will I bring, what value would I bring, and I think I'm trying to build that value until it reaches a point I think I have value to offer. Because then also companionship, value to offer to the other gender, and of course a family as a whole. Because then once you settle down, what are you doing to look at each other in the house? Somebody once told me one of the aspects is the joy it comes with it is family, starting to bring up your own entire family. And so, am I ready for that? Maybe in a certain way, but can I? build value that I'm able to give value to the entire family uh, that I'm I'm having at that point. So that's the value I'm trying to build and I think once I've built it, then naturally um, um, I should transition to uh, that aspect of life. Your patience is not their patience. So how are you dealing with their impatience? Because I'm sure Um, they're approaching you. I'm sure they're they're asking you, they come around. Are you seeing me? mm -hmm. How are you handling that whole I'm one unlucky fella who never gets approached. <laughs> yes, yes. So how how you manage that? Um, 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 um. How do you how do you just uh, respectfully? Mm. Uh, how do you respectfully tell someone who has seen that you have potential, mm. but you are not like you said you are still building the mm. How do you approach that situation? Um, our patriarchal society has made uh, this gender lucky gender that as a man I have to be the one to pull the strings and so that means even if there was a hint somewhere out there if I don't really take on the hint and run with it then processes are slow on that side and that's why even if there was a hint here and there um, um, I try as much as possible to slow down my reaction towards it so that I just give it a pace and of course it doesn't deny me an opportunity to get to know people because then you never know eventually so what I'm doing at this point is just getting to know people as much as I can know of you as possible without really rushing to transcend to a different direction uh, uh, knowing too well that probably I, I haven't fully made up that decision but again they say sometimes it comes and it knocks you off your feet is it yeah. love? love? if you let knock me off my feet yeah. 
I'll just you let it carry it. it. Yes, yes, yes. That is good to hear, Leka. And I will really not have done justice to this conversation. I was concluding without touching on one aspect of your life. You spend almost 30 or 40 percent of your life in a certain group of people. And uh, will you just like to touch a bit on that? Like, what do they mean to you? And, 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 and how, how, what value are they adding to your life? This particular point in time. Just, just, just explain to us. I know you know the group that I'm talking yes, about. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Say something about it so that people can know that life is a balance. You might see someone achieving so much greatness, but some of the greatness you see out here has come as a result of them giving themselves out to the society. Yeah. So, what, what is this community of people that you spend a lot of time? With? Thank you. Well, uh, that's why it's hidden in plain sight, and that's why we have this gadget in front of us because I'm doing this for them. I'm trying to learn fully the piano so that I can able to perfect the art of playing piano in the choir. I sing in the choir and I think it's one of those opportunities that for a number of reasons is amazing. One, it keeps me sane. The world is so insane. You are going to work, please find attached. Your deadline has passed. You've missed X, Y and Z. You did not do this. So there's so much cues in a day and when I uh, retreat from work and I go to choir and I sing it calms me down and I feel it keeps me sane and, and socially I start growing as well with the people I find there but the other thing is um, and to uh, who much is given money is also, much is also anticipated that God has given us different talents I am not a priest I could have been a priest um, probably some people would be expecting me to be but I could serve in other forms one of them is singing in the choir I have uh, the voice, it's not the perfect, most perfect voice. It can only blend in a group. It can't <laughs> sing alone. <laughs> it's not for a solo performance. It's not for a solo, it's choral. Eh? Uh, and, and, and so that's why singing in the choir is an amazing thing. So I think it's also a way of giving back. But also these things are passions. People have to find their passions. I think from a child, I think I started singing from class two, eh? the, the PPMC choir, the one for Sunday school. And then all the way, uh, class four, we were going for music festivals. In high school, you've seen on YouTube, uh, I used to sing some traditional songs, folk song as well, gospel, and then now here. So, so I've always loved singing, and 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 naturally, you know something you can't even tell why. So it keeps me sane. And the group I sing with is called Saint Hilda at Choir, at Our Lady Queen of Peace, South Wales. An amazing choir, young people, and that's a nice thing. Really, in this context, you will you find a group that you are almost nearly at the same level of mind, understanding, yes, and life as well. So that's a group of young people, but they sing at a perfect level. In the music festivals we were at the last week, the previous two weeks at choir, we were a diamond class. Remember there is open class, bronze, gold, silver. By the time you get to diamond, you are such a superior group of very young people and very few. Sometimes we are 40, sometimes 35. In a mass we can sing 20, and the days we even hit 60. But we really do a good job. Will you extend that group? Um, if there's a good gossip group, I could take on. <laughs> but because there's also a social aspect to it, but we are done from church and we all go somewhere to eat and and we chat through a lot of things in life. So definitely, it's it's, it's a group uh, I will not exchange. So, so William, mm. you know, sometimes we are told that when success comes to your life too early, yeah, you tend to lose the value that you attach to other things. In understand like if I uh, if, if I wanted a car for example I remember when I bought my first car I thought that I will never need anything else <laughs> but as soon as as soon as you have that car and it is parked at your garage at your at your, at your parking mm. then you want something you want you 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 the value that you attach to vehicles they, they, mm. they, to vehicles disappear yeah it is not the brand that will matter yeah but then but... The day, that that deep desire to own a car has just dissipates, understand? Mm-hmm. So, is it true that when success comes to you very early, like, you tend to just the value that you attach to things you tend to disappear, and you, you, might, you can easily not have the motivation to live uh, beyond what you have at the moment? Um, on assumption that I'm successful, I'm not sure I am, uh, but the I value I the, <laughs> the value you know, I had, uh, 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 you know, <laughs> the value I attached to Fanta Orange has never changed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you you have a, a solid point around it. So if what I always wanted was a piano, for example, and then I have the piano, so 
gradually and almost instantly, but largely it's always gradually. I find that now I don't need to work hard because I was working hard to get this piano and now I have it. So what next? I, I don't need to work hard more. Eh? And sometimes it happens along a number of things because eh? I have this. So probably you even start slowing down on how hard you are. But then I realized also there's a thin line between running back to that comfort zone and going back to that situation you never wanted to be that you are much earlier. It is super easy. It's actually, it's always just waiting for you. You are the one who actually you have to work hard not to go back there. So I've always learned that one, you don't attach success to a specific, just one milestone. Celebrate the milestone, but keep on with that vision that if I was to achieve this, okay, tick this off, rush to the other one, but not really without celebrating what you've achieved, but not getting it, letting it get into your head until you forget an opportunity to work even harder. And and, 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 and also the other way is, is to sometimes try to delink. You know, if you attach yourself to uh, items, it's easier to fall into that trap as opposed to if you attach yourself to an overall goal, which is always a moving target better myself every single day. Become the best of X, Y, and Z. I want to become the best of communication experts. One, I want to become a communication expert. I want to become a health communication expert. The best of communication expert in the country. Okay, now in the globe. You will definitely never satisfy that entire. And so it keeps you always at least in a nice rat race that you're always looking for the next thing. And that keeps you motivated. But if, if you tie it to a specific thing and you just say, I bagged the piano, I bagged the award. What else do I need? Then uh, that is too small because people achieve so much out here. There are so much bigger successes that what we sometimes celebrate may not qualify to success for them. But at some point they were here. So it means even you in that cycle keep moving. And, and, Thank you of which. Mm. I have not seen your baby. I, um, maybe we are trying to upgrade. <laughs> maybe we just, have liquidated. Just, just, tell them, just tell them, just in case they didn't know who your baby is. Uh, my baby is. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't want to say, but but it's it's, it's a nice baby from Germany, uh, and 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 she does a good job on the road. Uh, she's, she does what she was designed for, and you know the star always guides us. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> Well, I still admire other people's cars. <laughs> well, definitely, there's always an ambition. I, I, yeah, I think I, I was talking to the guy who helped me get the car, Doctor Shapaya, and very good at bringing these cars. And yesterday, he was trying to show me a nice um, E43 AMG. Like wow, that's a big engine. It would be nice, but I need something bigger. Then he says, "How about a GLS?" So there's always also the desire for something. And then so we've started saving again now for a GLS. Because actually, but what about a Range Rover? But he says the most. I'm sorry, Range Rover, but he says the most unreliable car in the world is a Range Rover. So don't touch that. So there's always a desire for something else. And I think what we were just talking about, comfort zone. That yes, you can have a nice means of locomotion from one to the next. But if if that's your comfort zone, then you can't even work for something else because now I feel like I need to save that means I need to also work harder because some of these uh, items you'd call them toys you can't save enough for them yeah. you just have to work harder for them yeah exactly yeah 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 interesting yeah. so uh, what is that one character that you have that is similar to um, perfection probably yeah 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 because because what probably people don't know I know we started saying that I love sleep true I love sleep but also sometimes I can't sleep for perfection. Today is a Sunday when we are recording this uh, podcast. Um, but on a Sunday, I should sleep up to morning. I woke up at four and, and just to catch up with what was my backlog for Friday and prep for the next week. So I think that bit of striving always for excellence every single day and to be the best on that platform, I, I think it's something I embrace. That is what you think We will not talk about high <laughs> now at this point. <laughs> you, you drive at a very high speed. I don't know who is watching. Yeah. <laughs> the government is not watching. Everybody, I think everybody has their addiction uh, and, and, and their bad habits. I wouldn't say speed per se, but I, I love the thrill of a good car that can move. That responds, you, the V6 or V8 kicks in, the turbo, like everything just communicates. It's always nice. You'd, you'd, you'd see that even that thrill, even if I'm on a road, it will be for a shorter distance that I'll move from zero to a hundred 
in three to four seconds, but after that, I'm not exceeding it. Yeah. It's, it's just enjoying the thrill of the car, but but not really going beyond uh, unnecessarily speeds because the power of that car, on our Kenyan roads, you can never fully utilize it. Yeah. And, and even in this city, you can never fully utilize it. But also we've learned that life is so important that y- you have to take care of yourself that those cheap some people would call them cheap thrills mm-hmm. that of just driving and moving there that yeah. people have done it yeah. and 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 we know how sometimes they've ended up mm-hmm. and, and 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 you have a whole future mm-hmm. you, my kids are still here <laughs> <laughs> and and i don't think i want yeah. to be uh, the guy who loves speed i like long drives drive to namanga we have a a, a club uh, for the car Ah, you mentioned it. <laughs> it's amazing, anyway. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And, and guys drive together. So, so those are the fun that I have and coming back. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so. Yeah, yeah. In this economy, putting your AC on is not an easy job. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure Volkswagen guys won't do it. I'm yeah. sorry, I have to just trash you, Volkswagen. You are going to attract so many enemies. And BMW. And that is a battle of the <laughs> <laughs> you'll put yourselves on the side yeah, and you'll fight your own yeah, battles. Yeah. Yeah. And by the time we are on the side, Some we'll find... Some of us are still in Japan, we'll, but... When we pull ourselves on the side, we'll find a BMW stuck somewhere. It's waiting for... <laughs> it's waiting for... <laughs> a flatbed. <laughs> it is not me. It is him. It is not me. Me, I'm still in Japan. I'm still having Japanese uh, struggles. But it's fine. Yeah, yeah. So, so... You're the one who brought me the car. Yeah. <laughs> so, like I'm very much motivated. I'm very motivated, motivated by by your life. Uh, I think many people who are watching, many people who know you, and even new people who are going to watch this uh, this production, they'll they'll definitely attest that you have done so much with it in a very short period of time. I just want you now to, as we conclude, to uh, just give, just 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 say, in, in in all the spaces of life that you have been. Pick one person that you would just like to give a shout out to. I'll, 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 I'll ask you to pick one person in your in your early childhood, very early childhood, not even primary school. The ones the ones you were playing banda, or no, depending on where you grew up. One person. Um, uh, Roy. Make sure he watches this. Uh, Roy Alela, Roy is superb. He has been mentioned three times instead of the national address. Yeah. Very brilliant chap. Yeah. He's an AI machine learning um, um, expert. Is it the same Roy that I know? Thank you. You see, you already know him. Yes. Yes, Roy right. was my classmate oh. when in primary school. How I worked with him? Uh, you may have. Yeah. You are a man of many talents, I acknowledge. Okay. <laughs> okay. uh-huh. uh, in primary school? <clears throat> Oh, that was Roy. Then childhood, I'd go to Johnston Fusena. Johnston was my Johnston was my the childhood. We used to go swimming pool, like very fast swimming lesson. We had Dufumpara. He had a box as a cowboy. I've never oh, forgotten boy. cowboy. You know, he was advanced, my friend. Eh? Yeah. So it looked like a swimming costume, but like, ah! and, and he became a very good expert in no, swimming. No, yeah, yeah. Senna, Senna is a quite a character, and mm. I think I, 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 I approve of that. Yeah. Uh, so Roy in primary school, mm, mm. high school. Because um, the other option is having to get them to watch this. Yeah. Eh? You have to get them to watch. Ah, uh, this is then that would be Charles. Uh, Ask me to say two because they are always together. Four. Charles and, and Larry, Larry Daktari used yeah. to dissect um, uh, frogs mm. from the water well, and now he's, he's a good surgeon, good at suturing. Eh? Wow. Yeah, yeah, he was brought here at KNH. Everybody wanted his 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 piece of work. Eh? Yeah, so Roy and Charles. Charles is is, is in Mombasa. Nice mogul. Okay. A, a very sharp uh, young chap. Yeah, okay. yeah. That is high school. Yes. University. Oi, hey, butani uwa. Me na tanya tu mutu moja. Hey, let it okay, go. Okay, lady and a guy. Uh, yes, for a guy, it will go to Mulei. Mulei, Mulei was my buddy. Mulei, we shared the same hostel. Mulei, uh, Tom, ah, yeah, it out. Hey, we shared a lot of things that I can't mention yeah. on the camera. <laughs> yeah. uh, a lady, maybe Mbeke, uh, Irene, eh, to call a chapa Udaku now. Namili. Like you'd find the three of us. Eh, hey, Udaku this way. Eh, to Kenda to Nana to Pika Ugali. And then they, when we finish cooking, we start with the Udeyo. Yeah. 
and and I am with Mili and and Irene. Tunaanza kukula the the cramp faster than is when we come to the those ladies are chala now. From university where do you go? To? Okay. Uh, at work? No, even my current my previous a uh, for uh, post grad. I have a number of classmates. This should go to since to me ngata to graduate my friend. Eh? Oleban. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh-huh. I have Cindy and and uh, the other should be Anthony. Anthony. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Anthony class rep. Uh, the guy used to save me seriously when I'm missing when a class. Hey, I remember watching Jalano saying how it's very important to be friend class. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Those people they are, they are very powerful. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. You come work. Let's keep. <laughs> No, this goes to George. George, George must watch this. Yeah, is he an IT guy? You know everyone yeah. friends are IT people. Yeah, I'm, no, no, he's, he's a good guy in, in advocacy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, George, uh, yeah. shout out to you. Yeah. And then, uh, where, where, where are we now? Church? Uh, you want to trap me? Choir? <laughs> hey, choir? Yeah. Uh, Uh, choir, choir. Let me let me say. Edu, edu, edu is an easy spot. Edu. edu. Um, a lady. <laughs> wow. No, I'll, I'll say a Joss. A Joss. Yeah, a Joss. No, a Joss is a lady. Yeah. We Kate. don't want a lady. We have to pick someone else. Uh, <laughs> uh, the other person will be. Um, Nane. Pachi. Pachi, Pachi. Pachi. Pachi, yes. Who is Pachi? Uh, Pachi is Eva. Eva. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, where else? Where else? I think I've covered. Yeah, yeah just cutting short and doing me back. Yeah. So, thank you very much, uh, Deka. That was very awesome. Thank you for finding time. Uh, it has taken a lot of time for us to do this. But I'm sure someone out there has been impacted. So, please, just give us your last words. Uh, thank you very much Dan for hosting me. Uh, uh, there's no excuse for being a young person yeah. that because I'm young people will understand. I think that's where young people have always gone wrong. Uh, you can't do the bare minimum because you are young and never use it as an excuse because you are young. So in fact use being young to your advantage that do so good that you excel at it because you are young and people recognize that this is that young person. But also work generally there's a point it doesn't care how young you are. In my entire career I think I'm always finding myself as a young person if not the youngest in the group. It's so always have to excel beyond age because then people say your virtue of, you are here by the virtue of your ability to deliver. So don't use age or being young as an excuse use it to your advantage that you are young and so you can put in all the energy that a young person comes with and excel excellence should be your motto excellence is rewarded wow. thank you so much william baker i have learned so much and uh, uh, as we close this up we hope to have another one but a, a simpler and a, and a more sociable one this yes. was a serious one but yeah. for various reasons yeah and we thank you very much for finding time There it is guys you have it my name is Duncan and uh, I look forward to the next session we'll be having similar many more of this kind and I'm just hoping that we shall impact you we shall educate you we shall inform you and above all we shall be empowered thank you very much